One of the most structural joints that you'll find in woodworking, and a joint that's used way more times than you'd expect, is a mortise and tenon joint. And what it is, is a two-part joint that goes together like this. This is the mortise, and this is the tenon. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about putting the mortises into the wood and a couple different ways you can go about doing that. Before we get started with it, I actually want to point out the differences. There are machines out that are dedicated mortise machines that cut square holes. And if you have one of those, that's probably where you're going to go. It's a better option for this joint. However, those machines can run anywhere from $300 for a bench top to $1,000 or more for a floor model. So it's quite an investment if that's what you're going to do. So I'm going to show you how to set up and use your router to create these mortises. And I want to point out a couple different things. If you look here, you'll notice that the ends of this are round, the ends of our mortise. And that's because we're using a router bit, which is spinning round. In this case, a quarter inch uh, straight cut bit. Now, there's a couple different things you can do. First of all, you can leave your um, tenons a little short of the ends, so you don't have to accomplish the rounded part. Or you could square each of these rounded parts out. Or you could also leave the tenon the full width and round over the ends of the tenon. Now, here's the big thing. You really don't need to do anything other than make your tenon a little smaller. Because if we look at the way a tenon and mortise, mortise and tenon joint go together, you notice that the glue surface that we have, the glue areas are on the flat grain here on either side or face of the tenon, and also the two walls of your mortise. The end of this is in grain. The ends here are flat grain. You don't have as much holding power with an end grain to flat grain as you do the two flat grains together. So there's really no reason to get that mortise fitting tight from top to bottom. In fact, I leave them a little small because I want the ability to be able to move my piece ever so slightly one way or the other to make sure that I get my ends aligned. So it's not really a problem to leave that round area. Now, as we begin with this, we're going to do the first setup we're talking about here is a standard plunge router. I have a quarter inch uh, straight bit loaded up, and I have a fence attachment on my router. Fences are a great addition to the router. Some of the tools are even being sold with fences. If not, you'll have to purchase them separately. What I want to do here is I'll lay out for my mortise area, make sure that my mortise is set in the center of the cut, and then we'll take the router and plunge it down in. Now there's a specific way that I like to lay these out, so I want to walk through that and show you, because it helps when you are looking at uh, how to do the layout work. So I'm going to start, our pieces that I'm working with are two and three quarter inches. So I'm going to make a mark right at two and three quarter inches, and then I'm going to square all the way across the board. What that tells me is that I have a board that fits from here to here when I get this joint complete. Then I'm going to go in and lay three-eighths of an inch up and three-eighths of an inch down. Now the three-eighths is an arbitrary figure, but for me, I like that because if you get a little too small up here at the end, especially like on a door or an end grain area, you have a tendency to blow that area out. So by staying at three-eighths, it gives you just a little bit more meat there. Now when I go back and mark these, I only put a short line across here. So when I look at this, I know right away that I'm going to mortise between these two short lines. And if I go beyond this line, I'm actually out in an area that people are going to see and it's going to ruin my workpiece. Now with the layout complete, I want to talk about the uh, work here with the router. If I work and balance on just this one piece, I've got to make sure to keep the fence tight and I don't have any other way of doing it. Also, as you work to the end, sometimes this can tip out and mess up your cut. So a way to offset that, it's very simple, is if you're working with multiple pieces, you can put these pieces in side by side. If not, I'm sure you've got some scrap around the shop that you can use. And what I'm going to do is just set it there so I have more of a surface to bear on. Plus, I'm offsetting these two to the outside from where my joint work is so I don't tip off of that uh, cut. So you bring your router over, make sure that it's set up about the center, and then you are ready to work. All right, so what I'm going to do, instead of plunging down and cutting across the joint, I want to make sure that I come back and I plunge down multiple times. And that's going to remove the wood. And then after I get from one side of the layout to the next, then I'll come back and work in small increments going down and cleaning the joint out until I reach the full depth of the uh, cut. And we'll balance or zero this out on our work surface and adjust 
our depth of cut just a bit and try to get ourselves in about an inch, which is going to be very close. Okay, so with everything set now, we're ready to go. Just going to go ahead and put my glasses on and we'll plunge through this cut and clean it up. So here you can see it is a series of cuts and it doesn't, it doesn't take forever to do. And you've got a nice clean area cut. It runs from layout to layout and we've got smooth sides on either side. So that's one way that you can create a mortise. Next up I'm going to show you another way to get that whole thing, whole process done. Now a second way that you can create a mortise is to use a jig. This is a simple jig that I made. Actually, it's a, an article in Popular Woodworking Magazine that will also be included as a PDF on the DVD. Uh, the difference here is we're going to use this in conjunction with a guide bushing, which is these two pieces that clamp into the router base. The way this is set up, the slot that I have made here is exactly the size as the guide bushing. And that bushing is going to allow us to go right down in there and hold in line and in track from side to side. The operation's the same, we're still going to plunge down, but it's going to be restricted movement side to side by the guide bushing, which means we don't have to have the fence. So if you have a guide bushing and not a fence, this is an option. The drawback that you have here is that each one of these are going to be made for a specific size, or you're going to have to make a large slot and come back and put stops in so you don't travel too far. So it's whichever way you want to do, you'll have to tweak that to make it work for you. But the way this works is I'm just going to load this piece into the jig and make sure that I get it down nice and tight. All right. And then from here, I'm going to clamp it right into my vise. Now, before in the other operation, we had the extra boards there to give us the, the riding the surface area so the router didn't tip. Here, we're going to actually use the plate that we have that's part of our jig. Now, to snap this in place, these bushings, they just slide right into the bottom and get snapped in, and then the retainer ring goes on the inside. All right, and then right now it goes right back on the router, and we're using the exact same router bit that we had before. Okay, same operation. You want to set it down in there. You're going to zero it out and then set the depth of cut. Now this is going to be limited a little bit by the length of your bit, how far in and out you put the router bit in the collet, and how long your actual bit is. All right, so from here, we're going to just get ourselves started. We're again going to plunge, so I'm going to start right at the back side. I'm going to plunge down until I reach the opposite side, then come back and clean everything out. And here's how that works.
Now this was a little bit quicker to cut because the mortise was not near the length of our first layout. And so there's our finished mortise here. So if you take a look at these two, you can see they both end up exactly the same as far as being a quarter inch that's dead center right in the middle of your board. And the other thing is that they're going to be length determined by the, your layout and how you make the jig in this case and how you work from line to line here. So here's one more tip that I want to give you. When you set up and build the jig, you have to build the jig so your piece is automatically centered in that, that layout. So we don't really have to worry to make sure that everything's perfectly centered. But with this piece, as we cut these ourselves, you want not only to cut it the one way, but if you're worried about being off center, then you want to cut it the opposite direction. You want to set it up to where you can run the whole setup in against the fence with the other side. So you're spinning it around and repeating that same step as you go through. So if you don't dial in exactly the center, there's a way to do it. The thing to remember is if you do work in from both sides, you're probably not going to have a quarter inch that you need for your tenon. It's going to be a little bit wider than that. So you'll have to take and, and make your tenons just slightly thicker in that case. So a great joint. Once we set this up, we'll take a look at how we're then going to make the tenons. So how do you make the tenon now? Listen, this is not the optimal way. A router is not the best tool for this. But in a pinch, when you have a router, this technique works fantastically. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is lay out my tenon on both sides. So I'm going to set up and, and draw a line in at the length on both faces of the tenon. Next, we're going to use this jig that I've come up with. It's called a square platform jig. Now for me, this is the jig in my shop that I use all the time. This, along with the setup that we have here in the router, which is that three-quarter inch pattern bit, are the tools that I use an awful lot in my shop. These are the ones that I would definitely recommend making and getting first off. So the way this jig works is it's square with the hook down at the bottom. So if we hook this in, I'm going to put this piece in just as a spacer to hold it up. You can draw this jig right over onto that line, and that's going to define right there on that shoulder. We're going to add a single clamp to this, and we're ready to work. Because the jig has the bottom edge on it, that keeps the whole jig from moving to, the, to one side as you route. Now you want to set this up as you do all jigs where your workpiece or your fence, I mean, is on the left-hand side because the rotation of the router is going to push that direction. So we're setting this up a single clamp. The piece in the back that catches the wood keeps the jig from moving side to side. Now you may see a little bit of movement with the jig and the entire workpiece, but the relationship of those two is locked in place now. Next thing you want to do is set the depth of cut on your router. We have a three-quarter inch board and we're aiming for a quarter inch tenon. So we're going to take a quarter inch away from both faces. So you're going to run through this operation, flip it over, hook it up the exact same way, make the cut again, and you'll end up with a tenon. So here's how it works. As I'm putting this together, I've got a one inch tenon and I've got a three quarter inch bit. So I can't just come through and plow that out because that would leave a quarter inch of material still in the, in the uh, tenon. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to climb cut a couple light passes through here, and then I'm going to finish it up going right up the normal way you'd run your router. So right there's half of the joint. I've got a quarter inch shoulder right there, and when we flip and do the other side, we're going to end up with a quarter inch tenon right dead center. I'll loosen it up and reverse everything, and we're ready to make the next pass. And pull the jig tight up, right down to the line, and lock it in place. And just as we talked about before with that pattern bit, wherever your fence is, that's where the bearing runs, that's also where the cut's going to be made. All right. 
So there we have a tenon that's cut with the two shoulders. If you take the time and lay out right on your lines, you should have perfect shoulders across there. Now the other thing we need to do is remove the ends. Remember we talked at the beginning that we want to make our tenon narrower than our mortises. So we have a little bit of wiggle room there and we don't have to worry with the rounded ends. At this point, you have a couple different options. This is not a router operation. I would set this up and mark it out and cut it with my handsaw, or you could take it to a bandsaw and finish up the work there. In the end, you end up with a tenon that looks just like this. So you can see the, the parallels of the two. They're both quarter inch thick. The ends have been trimmed away. And if you match that up with your mortise, you end up with a super strong glue joint that is a staple joint in most woodworking today.